All right, today we're going to talk about Feed Forward and Betaflight 3.5 and show you what it's doing under the hood. Okay, so before we jump into Betaflight 3.5, I wanted to cover how deep turn set point weight worked in Betaflight 3.4 and earlier versions. Uh, so you can follow along at home. Uh, what I do is I have the log traces uh, exported as well that I use so you you can go ahead and download those the link is down below it's tiny.cc filter forward slash filter calc and when you're in there open up black box open up a log where you've done some flips or rolls and then you can go ahead and hit open so you could open the log first and then you hit the same open dialog you can see here it is opens the file it's it opens videos to, to bring those in, a, in, a, in for an overlay, and it also opens any exported workspaces. So anyways, under um, the directory there, you will see a BBE trace templates, and go ahead and open up this UAV Tech JSON full, uh, file. That will load, and then the trace setup we're going to look at, uh, you press 9 on your keyboard. And this will give you essentially what I look for for when I'm looking at a roll move. Uh, eight is pitch, seven is yaw, uh, year zero is looking at uh, noise analysis, so they can go back, there's nine is roll, pitch, uh, seven is yaw, uh, one is kind of overall, a bunch of graphs, so on and so forth. So you can kind of to look at those on your keyboard. Uh, three and four are blank, five and six are kind of debugs and testings and things of that nature. Honestly, 99.9% .9 of the time I'm looking at 0, 9, uh, 8, or 7. So in this case, we're going to be looking at 9 because we're looking at a roll move. If we were looking at a flip, you'd look at trace 8. So you'd, again, you just or trace setup 8, so you just press 8 on your keyboard for that one. To simplify this graph a little bit here for our explanation, we're going to go into trace setup here as well. And we're going to remove PID error, and we're going to remove uh, PID sum, essentially this top graph and this bottom graph. So go ahead and do that if you want. And then I'm going to blow this out a little bit here so we can kind of look at this a little bit closer. So this is a beginning of a roll move. Uh, we have the P term, I term, D term. The gyro, uh, the debug, essentially this is the raw gyro noise. This is the filter gyro noise. And then this is the commanded roll rate. So notice it's RC rate, not RC command. RC rate has... Uh, all your expos and stuff applied to it. RC command is literally the commands from your sticks, but those have to get mixed with uh, your expo and super rate and all that jazz. That's what RC rate is. So in an ideal situation, uh, RC or your gyro, your filtered gyro, would follow on top of RC rate all the time, 100%. That's ideal. Hardly, ever, I mean, Obviously, if you're flying straight forward, it does. But if you're doing any hard moves, you can see it doesn't follow it. So back to this, what does the old way or D-term separate weight does? In a classic PID controller, I can look it up on the internet, these things have been around for a long time, D always opposes all motion, commanded motion or external forces motion. The best way I can think of a D-term is looking at a, the P-term and D-term together is a strut and shock uh, strut is the whole thing, but a shock absorber with a spring on the outside for the strut. The P term to me is the spring. So if you have a commanded push on this, the set point is essentially the distance between the top and the bottom here. The P term will push until it gets back to that controlled set point, which is that distance between the top and the bottom. Uh, this is an unloaded, so there's no weight on this uh, example here. So the spring is at uh, free rest. So if the again, if this is pulled, the spring will pull this, uh, the bottom of it here, to again get to that set point. What's happening in between the push and the pull is this D, the D term here, this the shock is opposing all motion. It's opposing the push initially, you know, from the top, and it's opposing. If this would be pulled, it's opposing that as well. It doesn't want anything to move. That's what the D term is doing. I say that, but if you look at the old actions of the D term, you can see it's not opposing it. If it was opposing it, you know, the P term would go up, the D term would go down. Why isn't it opposing it? 
Well, that's because of D-term set point weight. It incorporated a thing called D-term kick, which basically manipulated the uh, PIT algorithm, and it helped the P-term initially in uh, doing a move. So that was done away with and simplified. So what do we have now? So again, um, this is the same thing. It's a Betaflight 3.5. It is a um, you know same trace setup, just simplified it. And you can see now here we have the P term, I term, D term, gyros. There's a set point, and now we have this feed forward component. So essentially, what the feed forward does is it only activates when you have uh, sharp stick inputs and it really just helps the the p term it, it's an added or value i think the best way to show how simple it is and what it does is if we just look at the the total and the pid sum here so turn off that expo again but if i zoom in here and i look at my you know i pressed nine on my keyboard there so now i have the pid sum back up here the pid sum is at a value of 49.2 so I don't know if everybody recognizes what PID sum means, but it, it's literally the PID sum. So what's that mean? If I add 58 plus 1.1 plus negative 36.6 plus the feed forward value, I will get the PID sum. So 58.1 plus 1.1, I'm going to do minus 36.6 plus now this feed forward of 26.6 I get lo and behold 49.2 exactly so hopefully through that simple addition you can understand it helps you understand what feed forward is that's just an adding value to really offset the D terms negative value so it helps the P term um, do its job it gives an extra push so less feed forward gain in your uh, settings here will make this for the same uh, commanded stick input will have less gain or less value here so if I would reduce my feed forward to say 60 instead of 100 and I'd have the exact same stick input this wouldn't be 26 anymore this would go down vice versa if I want it to go up I would increase that gain in this number for the same commanded rate of stick input would be a higher number, which would result in a higher PID sum to enter the move. So since it's a fairly short video, I did want to also let everybody know that I have the Betaflight 3.5.1 F3 Performance Edition hex files out there. If you are looking for you know, 3.5.1 and you have an F3 board, these hex files have Smart V4, Throttle Boost, Absolute Control, blah, 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 uh, enabled and did disable PWM and some other uh, what I would call legacy or not uh, very much used receiver protocols to make room and also servo support I mean who's using servos uh, but if you are using servos then these wouldn't be for you um, it, again they're just for F1 and F3 boards if you want F4 or 7 go just the Betaflight official releases which also have the F3s but some of those F3 board hexes may not have these these components some will really depends on how much flash space is on the F3, how many components it has with it, so on and so forth. Um, so, you know, you might say, hey, I have the official release and I have these things. It's like, well, yeah, the, the, that your F3 must, might have some more flash size or might not have a barometer where this one does and so on and so forth. Uh, release notes are here, as always, for 3.5. And again, what's the difference between 3.5 and 3.5.1? Go to the Betaflight official release. I'm not going to retype all that here. Personally, if I was you and if I was looking for a performance, I would just go to the Betaflight 4.0-1075 performance editions, but hey, that's just me. That's there for use. Thanks, and I hope this helped.